Hello and welcome to this video on the multi-trade, multi-method approach. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish. And on this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials on Tuesdays. My videos are usually related to statistical issues in the M plus software. On Thursdays, I address more general topics in multivariate statistics. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, please don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, to leave a comment in the comment section and to hit the like button if you like this video. In this video, I want to walk you through the multi-trade, multi-method matrix. And first of all, I want to explain where this approach comes from and what it is good for. So the multi-trade, multi-method approach has its origins in a 1959 article that was presented by Donald Campbell and Donald Fisk. This article appeared in the journal Psychological Bulletin and was entitled Convergent and Discriminant Validation by the Multi-Trade, Multi-Method Matrix. In this article, Campbell and Fisk presented a new approach for construct validation, meaning for examining convergent and discriminant validity by using a specific measurement design in which multiple traits or constructs or attributes, we could say, are measured with multiple methods. So for example, different constructs such as anxiety, depression, intelligence, measured by self-reports, other reports, psychological tests in a fully cross design where each trait or attribute is assessed with each method or each type of rater so that we have a fully cross design and so that we can look at the correlations of all these different measurements that pertain to different traits and different methods. So in a design like that, each test score represents a trade method unit, so to say. So each measurement reflects both trade and method. And, and based on that, we can then examine convergent and discriminant validity by analyzing the correlations in a multi-trade, multi-method matrix. And that's what I want to show you now, how this works according to Campbell and Fisk. I want to show you an MTMM matrix and I will walk you through the different types of correlations or values in such an MTMM matrix. So here you can see an example of a an actual MTMM matrix from actual psychological research. In this study, what was measured here were three different attributes, depression, anxiety, and competences of children. And the methods that were used in the study were self-reports. So the children rated themselves on with regard to their own depression, anxiety level, and with regard to their competences, different types of competences that were um, aggregated to an overall competence score. And then also peer reports were collected. So other children nominated children in their class for um, anxiety, depression, and competence so that there was an overall score for each child based on peer nominations. And then also there was a competence score that was um, uh, or there, sorry, there was also a parent report where the parents were asked to also rate their children on those three constructs. And so each method or each type of rater was used for each construct so that we have um, a fully cross design and we can look at all those correlations. Now, what do these correlations mean and what meaning specifically do they have for the analysis of convergent and discriminant validity. First of all, there are the so-called monotrade monomethod values. So mono here means same, so same trade and same method. And so you could ask yourself, well, those should be simply one. If this is a correlation matrix, then um, the correlation of a variable with itself by definition is equal to one. So that's bizarre. So to say that there aren't just ones in the diagonal, but the reason is that this would be boring, so to say, and the space can be used in a better way. And so Campbell and Fisk figured that a better way to make use of that diagonal space in the correlation matrix would be to put the reliability estimates so that there's some additional information about the precision of measurement, the reliability of measurement. So this 
doesn't have anything to do with convergent or discriminant validity, but those are merely the, the reliability estimates that are derived from some other kind of analysis. So for example, those might be derived from calculating Cronbach's alpha for an overall score or a set of items or some other um, reliability index that uh, would be appropriate to use. And so these are also put in parentheses to indicate that those aren't actually real results of a correlation analysis because in a real correlation matrix, also say in a standard um, correlation matrix, technically those values should all be 1.0, but they get replaced by the reliability estimates in the MTMM framework. And so you can see here that those reliability estimates are um, good to not so good. So some are uh, above 0.8, which would usually consider to be decent, but there are also ones that are not so great. Um, the competence ones are a bit lower, so one is only 0.64 for self-rated competence, the self-report of competence right here, and then also um, peer report competence and peer report anxiety is around 0.7. Um, so those, but overall those look pretty Okay, now those aren't of key interest, obviously, to an MTMM analysis, because really the MTMM analysis is about um, convergent and discriminant validity, but the reliabilities are still relevant because um, the convergent and discriminant validity coefficients that we will discuss in a few seconds um, can be difficult to interpret when you have reliabilities that differ strongly between variables and or when the reliabilities are fairly low. And the reason for this is that the correlations are between observed scores in this matrix and measurement error or unreliability has an attenuating effect on correlations. And so when you have low reliabilities, then the correlations represent underestimates of the true score correlations. And the lower the rel reliabilities, the, the stronger the underestimation of the true, for example, convergent validity. And so therefore it's important to keep in mind or have an eye on how reliable or unreliable the scores are. In a separate video, I present the correction for attenuation formula derived from classical test theory, which can be used to um, correct uh, correlation coefficients for this problem of unreliability. And this could be applied here as well to this matrix. So that's one reason, so say why it's good to have the reliabilities in here, because then you could say, oh, if, if those variables really aren't very reliable, then we might strongly underestimate the convergent validities. And another reason is that when reliability estimates differ strongly between different variables, then the comparison becomes jeopardized, so or could be problematic, because then differences in reliability might account for differences in the size of the correlation coefficients rather than true differences between the correlations. And so this is one reason why oftentimes in modern MTMM analyses, we use confirmatory factor analysis models to analyze MTMM correlations rather than the original Campbell and Fisk framework because confirmatory factor analysis corrects for measurement error and gets rid of this problem of unreliability, attenuation, and lack of comparability of those correlations. I have a separate video on this channel on CFA MTMM models, and I also offer a workshop with Quantfish in which I discuss multi-rater and multi-trait multi-method analysis with confirmatory factor analysis models in great detail. You can find the link in the description for this video. But now back to the original MTMM matrix. So despite this problem of unreliability, people often use this matrix. And so um, we wanna see where we find the convergent and discriminant validity coefficients here in this matrix. So the next relevant values, so say geographically in this matrix, are the triangles that come exactly below the main diagonal. And I highlighted, the, highlighted them here with these triangles. And so those are the so-called heterotrade monomethod values, because now we're looking at different traits, as you can see here, or the correlations between 
different rates, but within the same method, so or within the same type of rater. Therefore, hetero trade, different trade, mono method, same method. And so obviously those indicate discriminant validity because they involve different trades. So within the same method, we can look at whether those um, constructs are sufficiently distinct, whether they are not overly highly correlated. Here you can see that depression and anxiety in all three rata types is fairly substantially correlated, 0 0.67, 0 0.65, 0 0.67. Now that would be expected because from a clinical psychology perspective, depression and anxiety are often present uh, at the same time. So those are um, emotions or uh, psycho pathological issues that are often that often go hand in hand anxious people are often also depressed and vice versa so it's not unexpected that we see these substantial correlations here and i wouldn't say this necessarily indicates that there's a lack of discriminant validity you can see that competence is comp the competence score is negatively correlated with anxiety and depression scores in all three rater types and that makes sense because a competence is something positive so to say and anxiety and depression high scores mean something negative and so then this indicates that individuals who rated themselves as more anxious and depressed tended tended to rate themselves as less competent with competent with regard to the self report and also that was the case for peer raters peer raters also nominated anxious children and depressed children as less competent and parents also followed the same um, path, so to say, or showed the same pattern. So that all makes sense. Um, and those correlations are also fair, fairly sizable, but not as large as the correlations between anxiety and depression. Next are the so-called monotrait hetero method values, which come in these sub-diagonals below those triangles that we just looked at. And so those monotrait hetero method values are for the same trait, but measured with different methods or different raters. And those values are of key interest in an MTMM analysis because they indicate convergent validity. And convergent validity is often something that researchers are particularly interested in because they want to know whether different methods, different measurement devices, different approaches to measure something result in the same findings or can be used interchangeably perhaps, or whether there are strong method effects, strong rata effects, discrepancies between rata. So those are so to say values of inter rata agreement in a sense. And here you can see they're very low. And this is something that is not uncommon in psychology for traits that are more related to internal uh, processes. So emotions, feelings, you can't always see that somebody is depressed or anxious. It's not something that's always very obvious. And so then the self and other ratings often don't show the best convergent validity. And that's definitely the case here. You can see those values range only between, between 0.12 and 0.43. So the competence ratings between peer and parent reporters is relatively high that correlation there's relatively high agreement but there's um, otherwise fairly low agreement between those different rater types the last type of correlation in this matrix can be found in triangles around those convergent validity or hetero trade mono method sub diagonals and those values here that are located around those subdiagonals are called hetero trade hetero method values because now this is about different traits measured by different methods and so obviously those must also be related to discriminant validity because they involve different traits and so those are of interest as a baseline condition so to say because those are between variables that share neither the same trait nor the same method so they shouldn't be very high necessarily and definitely they shouldn't be higher or as high as the convergent validity hetero trade mono method sorry mono trade hetero method values that we just looked at 
And so this is something that here is in this matrix looks pretty bad because those values in those triangles, those hetero trait, hetero method values are just about the same magnitude, just they're just slightly lower on average compared to those convergent validity values in those sub diagonals. And so that's not good. We would want to see a big difference ideally between the uh, heter the mono trade hetero method values and those hetero trade hetero method values. So in this case, the matrix is not ideal in terms of the criteria uh, that were developed by Campbell and Fisk for evaluating the correlations in an MTMM matrix. Um, but it's also a matrix that is not untypical, that is not infrequently seen when we look at children when we look at constructs that are more about internalizing behaviors or emotions, then it's pretty common that we find relatively low convergent validity and insufficient discriminant validity is also something that we um, that is not so rare. You can see in this case, the highest correlations are found in the hetero trade mono method triangles that we looked at at the beginning after we looked at the reliability estimates. Those are the highest correlations and that indicates that there are strong rater effects, meaning halo effects, for example, biases where raters who judge somebody as depressed and also uh, tend to judge this person as anxious automatically. So they have this general impression of a person that carries forward into different domains. And this could indicate a rater bias or rater effect. So this is how you um, look at those correlations, how you um, interpret them. And there are also criteria that Campbell and Fisk proposed in their article about how specifically we should evaluate those correlations. I will address those in a separate video um, and then um, you can take a look at that as well. And then I will show you how Campbell and Fisk would, what criteria they proposed for the specific analysis of these um, convergent and discriminant validity coefficients. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section, and don't forget to check out the description for additional resources. And I'll see you next time.